Welcome back. Welcome once again to the podcast. Welcome to our second review episode for the One and a Half White Guys podcast or more unsolicited white guy opinions on movies for long. I'm Nathan, your half white guy. I'm Nick, your one white guy. And welcome to this very, very uh, enthusiastic review of a most recent movie that has come out. One we did a movie in preparation for, right, Nick? Technically, yeah. Luckily, we're, we were able to release Godzilla, the 1954 original Gojira Godzilla to uh, be reviewed. And hopefully you've had a chance to listen to that episode. But this one, this is about the most recent Godzilla movie, something we both enjoyed. Godzilla minus one. I was shown this movie by you. Yes, you I said you had to see it. You implored me to come with you. So I said, OK, that was a fantastic experience. This is a phenomenal movie. I, I would argue this is just as good as any Godzilla movie that's ever come out. Toho has produced this movie uh, about a very unique setting. It's a period piece. Actually, I think the first period piece. This takes place post World War II Japan, which is a very interesting time. Uh, this in, is in history. right at the ass end of World War II. Yes, going straight into recovery of Japan from World War II. Yeah, if they can even attempt it. Yes. Well, remember that's the whole that's the whole thing. God, the the World War II knocked Japan down to zero, and they they were already at zero, and then Godzilla showed up. So knocked now it down another peg. So now it's my Japan and Godzilla minus one. Thanks, Godzilla. Yeah, we really needed that. Yeah, thank you for showing up and beating down an already beaten down country. <laughs> Thanks, Bikini Atoll. <laughs> it's the same thing that happened again. <laughs> what if America intentionally nuked Bikini Atoll because they knew it would create Godzilla so that he could finish what they started? Oh, yeah. Well, may <laughs> God. <laughs> what if that is the script for the sequel? Oh, where it's dude, revealed? that would be insane. That but would be... I don't know if they could do that, though. I, because I don't know <laughs> if you would want to do that. I think that becomes too big, bang, boom action movie like you like. No, not too big, bang, boom. I think that's more of a villainize, let's villainize the shit out of the United States. I mean, I don't fucking care. I mean, I, 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 think, I, I, I think, go uh, see it. I think they would. <laughs> I mean, people be like, nah, that's rude. We didn't do that. I don't fucking care. Let me watch this movie. It's a movie with a you big, did nuke big dinosaur. Not far from the actual island, though. Yeah. Well, so in this one, it's this one. So just to be clear, the hydrogen bomb testing was 1954, early 1954, 1953. So this is just regular atomic bomb testing that made this Godzilla uh, into what he yes. is. This is regular old atomic energy. Oh, Has yeah. to be the United States because the USSR doesn't have one yet, but they will soon. <laughs> in, the, in the timeline of this. Regardless, uh, I've seen this a few times now. Nick's seen this once, and we're, we're happy to be doing this kind of uh, review, this quick review again of the movie. We'd like to be able to do these reviews. We did one for, uh, what was it? Talk to me. Godzilla Minus One, released in 2023. Written and directed by Takashi Yamazaki. Written and directed, uh, produced by Toho. Starring Minami ha Hamabe. Hamabe. Sorry, I'm, I, I looked these up and I'm still fucking it up. Uh, as Noriko, Rainosuke Kamaki as Koichi. Really only one I want to sh shout out as well is Sai Nagatini as Aikiko, who is the little girl in this. And boy, is she just so sweet and see she steals the show. Post-war Japan is at its lowest point when a new crisis emerges in the form of a giant monster baptized in the horrific power of the atomic bomb. No one wants to study this son of a bitch in this movie. Everyone wants this thing dead. No, he's got to go. He's <laughs> got to go from like the first scene he shows up. You understand why. Oh, <laughs> yes. Nick and I kind of have different tastes on movies where we, you know, we have these because Godzilla is always going to be an action movie. There's always going to be action. There's always going to be big bang monster fight. movies. Monster, have that. You know, big set pieces and everything like that. But for me, what makes it is not so much this big bang fun things. It's what makes it's a it's a story, an intimate story that Godzilla kind of happens to be a part of. And he's that, a very big part of it. Though. Oh, he is a very big part of it. Don't get me wrong. But there's a lot more at work. There's a lot more deeper understanding of character development. And, there's and deeper things being trying to work touched on, especially in this movie. Our characters make the movie. Absolutely. Essentially. Godzilla is a byproduct of what the movie's themes are trying to push on us yes essentially what which is what godzilla yeah. always was from the start you know Absolutely. eventually he became our action hero he became our saturday morning cartoon shit like, out of king kong type shit you could tell me this is a remake of that first one 
without me knowing anything about it, I would watch it and I'd believe you. Because also the references to the original in this... Oh, they're, they're everywhere. They're so organic, though. Yes. They serve the story, like, wonderfully, instead of just kind of being in-your-face little nods, like, hey, remember this? Remember this? Remember this? You, I members. I <laughs> members all of it. We open on Odo Island. Odo Island, which is a kamikaze, or it used to be, I'm assuming, just a regular airfield, but now it's a kamikaze pilot repair uh, station that is clear. Make made. sure your plane is working so you can blow it up later. Yes, blow it up. And it's uh, <laughs> it looks like it's been hit by some artillery. There's holes all over the runway and shit. And a plane is landing there. It looks like a Japanese Zero loaded with explosives and jet fuel. And it is driven by or piloted by Koichi. Rhinosuke Kamiki. I'm probably saying that wrong. Yes. Yes, I'm saying that wrong. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but he has landed on this island for repairs to his uh, his plane. He's saying something's up with the plane. I, I, I don't know exactly what's going on, but I can't fly it correctly. All the mechanics there greet him. They're like, oh, glad you're here. We'll, you know, we'll take a look at your plane. We'll fix things up. Uh, here's the thing, though. Everything seems to be okay with your plane. Yes. Weird thing. Doesn't seem to be anything wrong with your plane. There's no damage to your There's plane. There's no damage. It seems to be working fine. Which is what this airfield exists for. Yes. Uh, and now this... Koichi takes this as it is. This is an implication that he doesn't want to do his duty. He doesn't want to die. He doesn't want to die for the empire. He's not going to go live in the jungle for 30 he years. He dipped out of he dipped his... Out. And at that time... Yeah, he, he goes sees, to sit on the beach. He sees some stuff coming up from the depths. Some weird looking fish. Some fish with, uh, you know, golf balls coming out of their faces. <laughs> that looks like an eye. Yeah, it's supposed yeah. to be an eye. It's like a deep sea fish, but a deep sea fish that has, you know, that wasn't supposed to come surface. So, you know, the pressure is uh, probably getting to it. Pushing it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the uh, raid siren goes off in the airfield and they're all running out and Koichi's still there. He hasn't flown away. He's supposed to fly away the next day, I guess. And it's, uh, it's all dark on this island. Mm. There's like there's barely anything lit except the, the airfield. Yes. And uh, they all run out. They're like, okay, well, what's coming? Is it a plane? Is it a boat? What is, is it, it? The Americans? What's going on? Yeah. It's none of those. Th In fact, it might have been better if it wasn't. Hey, I, I would probably prefer the <laughs> Americans at, at this point because they, they sh hit the guy in the tower like, hey, sh shine your light. Hey, I think shine something's, the light on the beach. I think something's on the beach. Oh, something's on the beach. He shines the light and there he is. Godzilla, Godzilla. proper. Looking about three stories tall at this point. He's like, he's slightly bigger than... Your average T-Rex. Yeah. Jurassic Park He's bigger dinosaur. than the average T-Rex. This scene... Probably about a T-Rex and a half. It feels size. spoilerish to talk about this scene because this scene just caught me off guard, too. This scene's too. four minutes in. The minute that light shines on that animal, oh, he lets you know he's there. Oh, he does his he, normal roar. He That's does, Godzilla, all right. Not his normal roar. His, like, amp to ten nightmare roar. Yes. <laughs> like, he sounds mechanically possessed yes almost it's they just, they they recorded i do want to say this they got his roar for godzilla in this movie by getting the original roar putting it on a loudspeaker in an echoey room and recording that nice. that's how they did it that's they just recorded that same same sample from 1954 put that in an echoey room record that and he, i do want to say he looks good like they they make him look great in this movie i think they do he looks fantastic. He best edit way blows out any Marvel fucking uh, CGI and uh, out of the water. <laughs> Nothing halting on these people. This is in line with the original Jurassic Park CGI. They made looks some really wonderful, fucking good. They made some wonderful effects. They made uh, in, in stellar imagery with him. He does look fantastic. He in looks this. great. And, and he takes down that tower, shining the light on him. This scene is something it feels spoilers to talk about the scene because it comes so out of left field. Like yes. it caught me off guard. I was like, oh, he's here already. Holy shit. Yeah. But he's not quite Godzilla size yet. Watching this, I was like, you know, I think a lot of us wish that this is what the Jurassic World movies could have been. God, like. I know. right? Yeah, You're they, just like, fuck, this is what it was supposed to be. This is what it could have been. Um, good. <laughs> and he wreaks holy havoc on this airfield. And these people, he is targeting these people specifically. Yes. Well, so he, he doesn't know they're there at first because they go hide in the bunker. They get the ammo out. And uh, Tachibana tells Koichi, hey, he's in front of your plane. Your plane still has the 20 millimeter cannons. Like these things, you know, these things are designed to like take down, you know, bombers. These things, you know, your cannons yeah. are designed to get take in down there and fire on ships. Him. Get in there, arm your cannons and shoot this thing. <laughs> he goes, hey, Ko Koichi has, I think, the same thought. What if it just makes him angry? What if it doesn't actually do anything? 
And Tachiban is like, 20 millimeter will do it. Don't worry. It can kill anything. We get have to, to your, try, dude. Get to your plane. <laughs> get to your plane. Now, we did not foresee this coming yes. in the war, okay? Now, <laughs> now, this is pretty much a different version of kamikaze yourself. This could not work. Yes. And you are you are dead. If, if this thing gets pissed, it will destroy your plane. You are going to die. Like, it is no issue with it. So he gets in the yes. plane, sneaks over, full in the crosshairs. He pulls the trigger very gently and doesn't pull it. Nope. He is scared. He just covers his mouth. But that freaks out some of the other guys who are holding their 99 era soccer rifles and they shoot at Godzilla. And this has no effect at all. (laughs) These are small arms. You ain't going to fucking kill Godzilla. But that did make him angry. Oh, he is very angry. Now now. he knows where you're at. And And he goes to town on these fools. He kills all. All of them, and he's he hurts. stomping on people. He is chomping on people and throwing them in the Tail air and everything. The shit out of everyone. Oh, he's he, it's it's a massacre. Everyone, like- everyone dies uh, except Tachibana, who gets his leg stepped on. So he has a like a smashed up leg, and he also blows up the plane. Like Koichi jumps out of it, and Godzilla just like smashes it into the air and blows it up. Yeah, and Koichi and fucks off back to the ocean. And Koichi passes out because he's hit by the explosion and stuff like that. This is the first of two times he'll pass out in the movie. I do love this kind of part of history where it's these little horror stories that take place within like these other horrific like events in history. Oh yeah, the like kind of the intimate story taking place, the micro taking place in the macro. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's I love what that. that reminded me of, and I thought if a whole movie was centered around this, I'd love it. Just yeah. the same. And there's something so scary about this, uh, like another little horror story taking place against the backdrop of something yeah. already horrible. Yeah, happening. I would agree that see that adds such a level of uh, complexity to the whole issue because mm-hmm. you have this bigger thing you're supposed to be a part of. You're supposed to be working for. But yet at the same time, you're dealing with another demon. Yes, basically. there's something way worse happening right now. And yeah, we, we kind of have to like focus on this. The very next day, everyone but Koichi and T- Tachibana are dead. And yes. Tachibana just he has nothing but contempt for Koichi. because he, 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 he lets them know. He goes, these people fucking died. These are all dead because of you. You could have you done something. You could have done something. You could have done this. Which goes back to the Japanese thing of kill yourself, sacrifice yourself for the bigger thing. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to sacrifice all that. And now it's like he, it would have worked. Now, would it have actually killed Godzilla? Fuck knows. No. Yeah, no, no, no idea. I don't think it would have. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Uh, no Would've idea. Been a shorter movie. No idea. He gets back home and discovers his childhood home has been burned to the ground by those his entire neighborhood. Those Tokyo fire bombing raids. Everything. I mean, it's all wooden houses. Of course, when yeah. fire hits it, you're done. His parents were dead, by the way. They died in the fire. So he's miserable and he's trying to. You know, he's he's got nothing. He's just living out of his burned to the destroyed ground, destroyed house, shamble house. But it's okay. He's waiting for, I think, like a uh, rice or something like that. Yeah, they're they're handing out rations to yes. people. And you hear from the back in the market, hey, stop, thief. And it's a woman running with a baby. And it's and Aladdin it, running past going, one jump ahead of the <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought for a second when I first saw the movie, I thought she stole the baby. And they were like, stop, thief. I thought that was what they <laughs> were screwing. It becomes a Tokyo Godfather. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like, that's what I thought. I was like, oh my God, the woman stole a baby. And turns out she he she stole food and you know koichi's like i'm gonna stop this woman and Wait, she goes what are you doing lady and what she's like okay here thank and you and just throws the baby into his arms and runs off so he's stuck with this baby he has no idea what to do with this baby this baby's you know just you know it's a nice healthy looking baby this is a random baby yeah and so he's just waiting in the market for her for it seems like an hour or two he waiting for her to come back contemplate leaving the kid oh i know i was like don't do that dude come on but he has a change of heart he's like how can i do that he goes back to Get the her. kid gets her he goes back to the kid and he starts walking back to his house and then she pops out of like a box and is like hey thank you i wasn't gonna go back into the market because i would have been seen man you took forever i was waiting for you to walk away so i could intercept you again yes and, and she he's was also like okay waiting well uh, here take your baby and she's like well it's not my baby and she goes because she goes uh <laughs> well this is actually important because he goes she goes why didn't you leave her because at this point they're so used to everyone looking out for themselves and like there's no 
like every the, man for the himself. The fabric of we, society yeah. and Japanese society is gone. The war is over. We have nothing. Yes. We have little to nothing now. But yes. our the but the skin on our backs. Yes. Yeah. And she he goes, I can't leave her in a place like that. And she's like, oh, he cares. You know what this means? And she follows him all the way back home. Let's become a nuclear family. And <laughs> reveals like this isn't my baby it's somebody's baby that died in the fire bombings yeah this baby has no one i took care of her like i promised her mother i would take care of her and she goes he goes okay well you're leaving after tonight and then he goes and talks about you know his parents and she turns back and she is sleeping with the baby on the floor yep. so it sounds like she's sleep she's staying forever noriko is the, w- the woman that uh we thought stole the baby and they named the baby no, no, no. The baby already has the name. It's on the it's on the blanket. Remember, Aikiko. Aikiko. That's the baby's name. Yep. Jobs are scarce in Japan, but it's OK because Koichi has found one. Finally, that is legitimate and backed by the government. We all trust them, right? Anyway, anyway, <laughs> it is sea mine removal. They have to cut yes. the ties for the mines, uh, pull the mine up to the surface and blow it up and detonate it detonate the mine with a gun from the back of the boat this is great i'm gonna earn a good living smash cut to a nuclear bomb hitting an island in the middle of the uh middle of the pacific ocean smash cut to bikini atoll (laughs) and godzilla's eye getting bigger (laughs) as fire goes all over him and him roaring godzilla's eye not only getting bigger getting a little angrier oh yes so so we have not seen you haven't seen the last of me (laughs) spider-man fact number two gareth edwards director of the 2014 godzilla film by legendary attended a screening of godzilla minus one he described a feeling of jealousy while watching the film stating this is what a godzilla movie should be like right on big praise damn and he i really like that movie the 2014 one it's you know it's it's all right i liked i enjoyed it i just you know they somewhere it might be the, one of the best american ones yeah yes it's one of the better american yeah ones. that's 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 <laughs> all i would say you know it, it's in a league of its own it's the top of a league of its own you yes know? that's the start of kind of the america's saturday morning cartoon yes godzilla because Monar- what's, the monarch what's leading, series yeah. yeah the legendary ones because what's you know about to come out for that is godzilla and kong teaming up godzilla and kong buddy cop yeah. <laughs> is what it seems like. I really, really enjoyed this, and I think it provides a very unique perspective on, on a group of people because in America, when the World War II generation came back and rebuilt the world from pretty much scratch, we labeled them as the greatest generation in America. That's what we label this as. But what about the people that didn't win the war? You know, what is their contribution? Japan, Germany, like, these get, United States at least won. England won. All these people won. You know, they got to come back and build this thing with this, this great time of, you know, American exceptionalism and growing and everything's supposed to be like that. But what about these people? I think there's not, there's not a lot of movies that focus on the ones that lost the war, but yet they're still part of this greatest generation. They're still in the generation. So I, I love this story because it focuses on them. Something that's very, a very unique time in history. And that's why I love it. Yeah, this is, you know what? We're done. Go see Godzilla Minus One. Do it. Do it. Go see it. All right. Thank you for listening to this review episode of the One and a Half White Guys podcast and watching. Be sure to follow us, rate us, and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts from. And don't forget to follow us on TikTok at One and a Half White Guys, on Instagram at One and a Half White Guys podcast, and now on our YouTube at One and a Half White Guys. And be sure to tell a friend to listen to the podcast where we say we're going to talk about a movie and we kind of talk about the movie. And remember, Go see this movie. That's it. <laughs> this is nothing, nothing else. I just don't have, I don't have any, no quip, nothing at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs>